Hey everybody, Merlin Silver here, back once again to round up our short series of videos on our favourite Max for Live devices. Now over the last few videos we've had a look at poly and multi, and we've also had a play at the more simpler sampler, but for today we're going to look at a topic that really we could talk about for hours and hours and hours, and that is convolution reverb. So before we go further, we've noticed there's a lot of people out there that are perhaps a bit confused as to what Max for Live is and how you might implement it into your Ableton Live workflow. So we thought we'd put together a handy short PDF document that you guys can grab from clicking on the link in the descriptions. And this will just walk you through some of the key concepts and also give you a heads up on some of our favorite devices. So without further ado, let's have a look at Convolution Reverb. Okay, so today we're going to spend a bit of time working with Convolution Reverb. This device is included in the Max for Live Essentials Pack that is available to download for free for all owners of Live9 Suite via Ableton's website. So I'm sure many of you have given this device a spin already, and that probably all of you have used Live's regular reverb effect. So instead of walking through the different parameters and features of this device, I'm going to spend today introducing you to some new ways of working with Convolution. As well as interesting and realistic reverb, convolution can be used in many different ways. Here is a simple 808 beat constructed from the rather tasty Neon Lights sample library from Black Octopus Sound. And here I've added some convolution to this loop to give the beat not just a sense of roominess and space, but also to add some tonal character and width to the sound. Convolution can be applied to designing and mixing drums in many different ways, and this is only touching the tip of the iceberg with this technique. But before we go any further, we should probably discuss what convolution reverb is. So rewinding a bit, this is a simple click that I've constructed from this Max for Live drum synth. First off, I'm going to send this sound to a simple and short delay. So we can hear what's happening here. The sound is being repeated after a delayed period of time by the delay effect. So reverb effects, like the device included with Live, create an impression of space by generating many delays that interact with each other, mimicking the reflections and diffusion we might find in a real world space. So back to the delay, and here I've created a small and crude network of delays to mimic the way a reverb is built. So you can see where this is going. Over to the actual reverb device on this channel, and as I increase the decay, you can hear what I mean. Cool, so that's how an algorithmic reverb works. Convolution reverb is an altogether different approach to mimicking space. So simply put, convolution is the process of filtering a source sound, so in this example the click that we've been using, through a digitally stored room sample which is known as an impulse response or IR file. An IR file is, for all intents and purposes, just a WAV or AIF file like any regular sample. In order to capture the sound of a space, we would record a loud click or gunshot-like sound played into the space, so that's why I'm using this click as an impulse to demonstrate in this tutorial. This click would later be phased out, and what we're left with is a sonic footprint of the space. I really think this is easier to understand by listening. So here I've used an impulse response taken from a tennis court. Can you hear the familiar echoes of the court just like a Wimbledon match? So let's go ahead and add this effect to the snare drum of my loop, and we're left with a very interesting and characteristic reverb. So 
So the Convolution Reverb device comes with a huge library of impulse responses, ranging from the realistic to the bizarre, and they're really worth spending some time going through. Back to reality then, and I've got a bass line here, and I really want to use it with my beat, but the tonality is a little bit too sharp for the vibe that I'm going for. What I'm going to do is convolve this bass line with a sample of the kick I'm using to see if I can make it blend together in my arrangement a little bit better. You can use any audio sample as an impulse response. All you have to do is drag it from Live's browser or from an audio track directly onto the impulse response area of the device interface here. Excellent. So as you can hear, instead of using a low pass filter and just cutting out all the harmonics in my sound, I've used convolution to accentuate the frequencies of the kick within the sound of my bass and dampen down the frequencies that aren't in the kick. Okay, so before I wrap up, I've got one last trick to show you. And this is a bit of a ninja move you can use for when you're kind of stuck and out of melodic ideas. So over here is a simple snare roll. And instead of using this as a snare roll, I'm going to use this as an impulse for this tonal skank-like sample I found in my library. So finally, I have a frequency shifter placed here to modulate the pitch of the incoming snare roll. The convolution reverb device will respond differently depending on the frequency of the input signal. Let's have a listen back. Great stuff. So as you can see, that's just the tip of the iceberg we're touching here. There's really so many uses of this device and it really does go very deep indeed. So I'll be seeing you guys really soon. I hope you've enjoyed this short series of videos. My name's been Merlin Silver and this is Warp Academy. Thanks for watching.